In this video, we are going to learn about square roots and radicals. Now, when solving the following quadratic equation, you must consider the square root. It is an operation we could take on an equation when something is being squared. So I could take the square root of x squared as well as the square root of 9. Now, when I do so, the square root of x squared is a very particular equation. It actually represents the absolute value of x that we talked about earlier in the year. Because any x I plug in will be square, which makes it positive, and then square root, which gets rid of that squaring process. So if I plugged in negative 1, it would make it positive 1, and square root would make it 1, making it a positive number no matter what. And the square root of 9, we're trying to think of what number squared would give me 9. Well, that would be 3. So I have two possible numbers for this equation when I break this up because this could be x is equal to 3 as well as x is equal to negative 3. Now it's two possible solutions for that equation because 3 squared is 9 and negative 3 squared is positive 9 as well. So there are two solutions to that equation. Now before I move on when a perfect square is underneath a radical, you can simplify the expression to a number that when squared shares, uh, when squared equals that perfect square. So we're going to focus on these radicals, and then we'll get into more of the solving process in later lessons. So how do you simplify a square root, or rather, how do you simplify a radical? Now, important aspects of a radical is factors underneath the radical can be separated. Meaning, if I had the square root of 36, which is also known as 4 times 9, I could think of it as the square root of 4 times the square root of 9, which would equal 2 for the square root of 4, and 3 for the square root of 9, which is 6, which makes sense because the square root of 36 would be 6. Now over here, the square root of 13 is not a perfect square, but one thing you have to know is that there are, if there are terms underneath the radical, that cannot be separated. So meaning if I have the square root of 4 plus 9, which makes up 13, I could, I could not split that to square root of 4 plus square root of 9. And the reason for this is if I were, that would be 2 plus 3, which is equal to 5. And square root of 13 is most certainly not 5. So if you ever see terms, you cannot split that up. But if they are factors, you're allowed to split that up in order to simplify the radical. So for example, we're going to simplify each of these radicals. We have the square root of 25, which we talked about earlier that the square root of 13 isn't 5. In fact, the square root of 25 is 5, because 5 squared is equal to 25. So this answer would just be 5. Now over here, 28 is not a perfect square. But maybe there's a factor within 28 that is a perfect square. So the way you can make 28 is 1 and 28, 2 and 14, and 4 and 7. Now 4 is a perfect square. It is 2 squared. So what I can do is think of 28 as 4 times 7. And use that little fact here, I can separate both those radicals, meaning I can write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. And the square root of 4, which I just mentioned, would be 2, because 2 squared is 4. So my, my simple, simplified radical would be 2 square roots of 7, or 2 times the square root of 7. Now over here we have 6, and sometimes even when you know all the factors of a number, there won't be a perfect square. So meaning, I know 6 would be 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. None of those are perfect squares. So my answer here, the most simplified this radical will get is the square root of 6. Now, sometimes you'll just see a prime number underneath a radical. And every time you see a prime number, that's not going to be a perfect square. Because the prime numbers are always just multiplied by 1 and themselves. And those are the only factors they have. So the answer for this would also be just the square root of 13. Now I have the square root of 324. Now I can't think of anything right away that multiplies together gives you 324. 
perfectly. I don't know if this is a perfect square, but I can see that this will probably be divisible by, by 4. So if I take 324 and I divide it by 4, I'll get 81. So I'll have 4 times 81 makes 324, and I picked 4 because I know it's a perfect square. So I can get the square root of 4 times 81, and I can separate that to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 81. But what's very convenient is the square root of 81 should be 9, because 9 squared is 81. So now I end up with 2 times 9, which is 18, which means that 324 must be 18 squared because when I finished the square root, I was only left with 18. So it's, it's okay if you don't recognize the perfect square. Sometimes you can break it down with other factors and still find the answer. Now last we have the square root of 450. Now again, uh, don't, I don't think it's divisible by 4 if I were to check. 450 divided by 4 I get 112.5, so it's not it's not a factor. So I can start just listing through factors I know. For example, I know it's divisible by 5, for sure. 450 divided by 5 would be 5 and 90. And 90 is also divisible by 5, so maybe this is divisible by 25, which is 5 times 5. So if I divide 450 by 25, I'll get 18, so I'll have 25 and 18, with 25 being that perfect square. So I get the square root of 25 times 18, which when I separate it, I get 25 times, square root of 25 times the square root of 18, which is five square roots of 18. But 18 could also still have a perfect square, which would be two times nine. Nine is that perfect square. So I can get 5 times the square root of 9 times 2, which would be 5 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which, when I take the square root of 9, I get 5 times 3 times the square root of 2, giving me 15 square roots of 2. So sometimes you can continue to take square roots and simplify it as you find smaller and smaller numbers. And those are square roots and radicals.